Assalamu alaikum. Ain't some uh, this is a question from an anonymous person, and she asks, uh, why did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu marry Aisha? I'm sorry. Uh, the, um, question, the question No, 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 oh, it's, more, it's more. Uh, why did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu marry Aisha at the age of nine? And can one use this example to marry young girls? Okay, the question of the sister is a very good question, mashallah. Uh, the question of the sister is, why did the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, why did he marry Aisha at such a young age? And can we use that as an example for us to marry young girls the same age today? Is that right? So let's answer this question. It's a good question and it's an easy question. Now the why of it, nobody knows except Allah. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never married any woman except it came to him from wahi. What does it mean? What is wahi? The Prophet ﷺ never went around looking at women and select this one or select that one or say, yo, check this out. Tell that girl I'd like to marry him or marry her. No. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, the messenger of Allah وسلم, never spoke anything from himself, but whatsoever he heard from wahi, this is what he did. Now we know that the Prophet is a man like everybody else, but Allah subdued his nafs. Allah subdued his nafs with wahi, revelation. So he was guided by Allah. He was accompanied by Jibreel alayhi salam. His nafs never came up above the revelation. So whatever the Prophet selected to do, he did it through the influence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through the guidance he received from Jibreel alayhi salam. So why he got Aisha? We don't know that because where did the order come from? Hello. Allahu Akbar. So the kafir, the non-Muslim, who is not able to understand and recognize, they between the sky and the earth. They suspend it because what? They're ignorant. They don't know. They don't understand the premise of revelation. So they can't appreciate that. But those who can appreciate revelation understand that prophets, alayhi muslim, were ordered to do things that we don't understand that we call mu'ajiza. We call it miracle, phenomena, because it came from God. So Allah selected Aisha for the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That's number one. And when the Prophet Sallam realized that Allah inclined him towards Aisha, who was Aisha radiallahu anha? She was the daughter of Abu Bakr radiallahu anha. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anha. And who was Abu Bakr Siddiq? Abu Bakr Siddiq, he was a well-known man in Mecca, right? Well-known, honest. He was an aristocrat, a, well, a, 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 a very influential man. He was, a, he was a, the, the uh, supporter of the Prophet Sallallahu He was a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu And Aisha was his daughter. So the, one day the Prophet Sallallahu said to him from the inclination he got from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he says, uh, oh, Abu Bakr, he says, do you love me? Abu Bakr said, Ya Rasulullah, I sacrificed my mother and my family for you. He said, then I would like to ask you for your daughter in marriage. This is very common among the Arabs. Don't think about Norway, don't think about Europe, you know, don't think about China, don't think about America, you think about the Arabs. The Arabs at that time, it was Urf, it was part of their Urf. It was very normal for them to ask for the daughter of a man when she was nine or ten so that that daughter could come and move with the family. Not sleep with him, but come and move with that family so he could observe her, she could observe him. So by the time she got to the age where she could have sexual relationships and have children and intimacy, they would have already built a bond. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? So the Prophet saw Sam, he didn't sneak around someplace and get her phone number. He didn't try to meet with her somewhere. He wasn't eyeballing her. He was not desiring her. This was his best friend. And who was Abu Bakr? Abu Bakr was one of the most respectful people of Mecca, of the Quraysh. So if some crazy, foolish, ignorant, corrupt, hating people wants to call the Prophet Sallallahu a pedophile, na'udhu billah, then that means that this means that the mother of Aisha, the mother, the father, 
of Aisha, Abu Bakr and Umhani, I forget his wife's name. That means they would have had to facilitate the Prophet Sallallahu in being, uh, have a, doing a pedophile relationship. Would that be correct? Could two respectful parents, could they have been guilty of something like that? Could Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala have inspired the Prophet Sallallahu but somehow or another he fell out of inspiration and he did something like that? No, that could not be the answer. The answer had to be something different. So the Prophet Sallallahu said to Abu Bakr, Oh Abu Bakr, why don't you give me your daughter in marriage? And Abu Bakr replied, he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, but we are brothers. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, Yes, but we are not those kind of brothers. See, they're not brothers of the blood. They're not brothers of the same family. This means that your daughter is lawful to me. And it is within the context of what the Arab Urf, that means the Arab society, what is well known to them, what is legal, what is decent, what is dignified, what is halal, what is clean. So the Prophet could not have been asking to do something that was abnormal. It had to be something that was normal. Now let us look at the fruit that came from the tree so we can understand it. Who was Aisha radiallahu anha? She's the woman that memorized the Quran. When the Quran was revealed, when the last ayats of the Quran, the last 6,636 ayats were revealed, three months later, Aisha had memorized the whole Quran. Think about that. Secondly, let's look at Aisha radiallahu anha. Aisha radiallahu anha, because she lived with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa She saw him, she understood him intimately, clearly. Her mind was bright and she was a powerful young girl. A very aggressive young girl. Powerful, aggressive and deep and intelligent. Memorized the whole Quran and guess what? She was holding with her when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa passed away at least 2,600 ahadiths that nobody else knew. And that's why after Abu Huraira radiallahu anha, nobody related to us more hadiths than Aisha radiallahu anha. So when you look at the product, when, you know, when a girl is raped, when a girl is molested, when a girl has been involved in some pedophile type relationship, she becomes dysfunctional. She becomes, you know, something different. She doesn't know herself. She becomes guilty. She becomes dirty. She becomes dysfunctional. And you see the result of it throughout her life. Is that correct or not? No, not our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. She was the teacher of 72 of the companions of the Prophet sallam, and the tabi'een and the atba'a tabi'een. She was their teacher, our mother. And when the Prophet Sam passed away, she was only 18 years old, which means she only was married to the Prophet Sam and lived with him nine years. And when she died, she was a mother of the believers. Is that correct or not? Is that right or not? So that means nobody could marry their mother. So from 18 years old until she was 73 years old, she lived by herself teaching. Which one of the women could do that? So when the people talk stupid, give them some of that history so they can understand who she is. And when you understand who she is, you can understand the context of things. And so, sister, may Allah reward you for that question. It comes in a lot of places, but that's the answer. And we say at the end, Allahu A'lam, say that. And that's for what we don't know.